Hello guys, welcome to Last Academy. This is video number two for ratio, proportion and partnership. In this, I'm going to solve some questions for this topic. The level of these questions will be easy. If you want, uh, you can pause the video at the start of the question and try them yourself. So let's get started. <music> So in this first question, the it is given that annual exp annual incomes of A and B are in the ratio of 3 to 2, while their expenses are in the ratio of 5 to 3. Uh, at the end of the year, they say 1000 each, then find the annual income of A. Now, when we see these types of questions, first of all, uh, what comes to our, what should come to our mind is that uh, there are two people. A and B, they have certain incomes, they have a certain expenses, and they save something. In this example, they save 1000 each. Write it down. So, incomes of A and B are in the ratio of 3 to 2. So, if income of A is 3x, then income of uh, B will be 2x. Now, expenses are in the ratio of 5 is to 3. Now, we have taken one constant as x. So another constant cannot be taken as x, so we, could, we should take it as y. So expenses of A would be 5y and expenses of B would be 3y and they save 1000 each. So what we can say by this is that uh, income and expense, savings should be equal. Income minus expenses is savings, okay. So if income 3x minus 5y, this is the save, this is savings of A should be is equal to savings of b both say 1000 2x minus 3y this should be equal okay because these are savings of both a and b and they save 1000 each so when we are going to do this this comes out to be x equals to 2y which is an important result you should keep that in mind and uh, now uh, now what are we going to do x equals to 2y we have got this now another equation that uh, the same equation we should we can take this equation like 3x minus 5y and this is equal to 1000 as well okay so if x equals to 2y we keep 2y here and 3 2y that this is going to be 6y minus 5y equals to 1000 which would mean that y is 1000 and if we put this here x would be 2000 now we have got both the variables now what do we have to find we have to find the annual income of a so annual income of a is uh, 3x which means 3 multiplied by 2000 which uh, gives us 6000 so 6000 is our answer all right these are conventional types of questions that do appear in the examination let's uh, look at the next one sum of uh, 9000 is distributed among a b and c in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 3 so what are we going to do here well we can see that uh, a b and c a certain sum a sum of 9000 is distributed between a b and c in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 3 okay so if i do it as x 2x and 3x this should be equal to we add all these comes out to be 6x total is 9000 so x we get as 15 1500 now 1500 we can um keep it here this should be 1500 this is 3000 and this is 4500 now in exams you might find this a little bit lengthy so when you come to terms you are thorough with this chapter and you have all your basics cleared you can do it directly like 9000 divided by 6 comes out to be 1500 now one share is 1500 
so you have to find difference between a and c difference between a and c is 3 minus 1 that is 2 1500 multiplied by 2 3000 is your answer although that um, may sound a little bit difficult to some of you but uh, you can always go by this method and try to do it quickly i myself did not follow a lot of shortcuts and uh, and uh, I, I think that has actually helped me because uh, uh, when i go by the conventional methods i don't have to remember a lot of stuff i just have to remember the conventional methods a few short tricks uh, might be helpful but a faster uh, calculation speed would be a lot more helpful so moving on to the next question a and b enter into a partnership a invests 10,000 for 9 months while B invests 12,000 for 12 months. Find the ratio in which the profits will be shared. So this, this uh, is an easy question but I just want to touch a concept here. In last video I told you that the, con that, uh, the partners share their profits in the ratio of their capitals. But there is a cash to that as well like uh, in this question the ratio would not be 10,000 is to 12,000 this would not be the case why because they have invested their capital for different am different uh, amount of time like a has invested his capital just for nine months and b has got his capital invested for 12 months so obviously a would get less of the profits and b would get more profits because b has invested for more amount of time now how to find the ratio in this case well we have to find the weighted capitals okay so 10000 multiplied by invested for 9 months would be 10000 multiplied by 9 and uh, 12000 invested for 12 months will be 12000 multiplied by 12 and this would be the ratio you just cancel it out three threes are nine threes fours are twelve five six this is two so we get the ratio of profits as five is to eight okay so just a simple concept of a weighted capital weighted capital is nothing but uh, the capital invested by an, a particular person multiplied by the amount of time for which it is invested okay moving on to the next one this is also a question of partnership like uh, a and b enter into a partnership they they invest in the ratio of five is to six at the end of a ma eight months a withdraws okay if they receive profits in the ratio of five is to nine then find for how long b's investment was used so let's look at this one a and b have invested in the ratio of five is to six okay this is a this is b his capital is 5x his capital is 6x okay at the end of eight months a has withdrawn so it means that a has has is invested in the business for eight months okay and multiply it by eight and uh, nothing is uh, given for b so we'll assume that uh, but actually we have to find out for how long b was invested in the firm okay so we'll just take it as k and uh, they receive profits in the ratio of 5 is to 9 okay so this ratio is 5 is to 9 so we can write it as uh, 40x by 6x multiplied by k and that is equal to 5 by 9 we have to solve for k okay so it's 2 it's 3 this is 20 this is 4 and k is 12 months so b was invested for 12 months 
A was invested for eight months, but we had to find out for how much long the B was invested. So eight months is your answer. Next question, the ages of P and Q are in the ratio of 15 is to 17. After six years, their ratio becomes nine is to 10. So how would we approach this? P, Q. P's age was 15X, Q's age was 17X. After six years, their ratio becomes nine is to 10. So 15x plus 6 and uh, 17x plus 6 ratio becomes 9 by 10. So if we solve this, it would be 150, 150x plus 60 equals 153, 17 nines are 153 plus 54. Okay. So this 3x will be equal to 6 which means x will be equal to 2. I don't need to solve these equations all the time. Now in the exam what I will do is that uh, I'll find a little bit of uh, a shorter way to do this like uh, this is 150x this is 153x here so I'll write 3x on the right side and uh, directly and uh, this would be 60 this would be 54 so 60 minus 54 would be 6 i would do it directly and x would come out to be 2 okay so i mean if you have faster calculations then this won't be a lot of problem to you you have to learn tables till 20 preferably 30 and you should uh, know how to do calculations quickly like if there is a question for like 35 into 7 you should know that uh, this is 245 and um, you do directly like 30 multiplied by 7 is 210 and th this is 35 is 245 you should uh, be able to do this in your mind to get better results in the exam right so so what uh, what has it asked in the question what is age of p after six years so p's age is 15x 15 multiplied by 2 is 30 plus 6 which gives me 36 and that's my answer moving on to the next question sum of the present ages of a b c d is 76 years okay after 7 years the ratio of their ages become 7 is to 6 is to 5 is to 8 okay so how would we approach this kind of question well uh, their ratio of their ages the seven years it is given so let's see this a b c e, d after seven years the their ages are 7x 6x 5x 8x so before seven years that is the present present ages would be 7x minus 7 6x minus 7 5x minus 7 and 8x minus 7 okay now the sum of the present ages is given so i have to add all this all these four values and this should be equal to 76 okay so 7 6 13 5 18 and 8 26 x minus 28 will go on to become 76 plus 28 this is 104 and 26 fours are 104 so x comes out to be 4 then what is c's present age c's present age is nothing but 5x minus 7 which is 20 minus 7 that is 13 okay now you could always uh, you could always if you get comfortable with the, these types of questions you could always do it directly like um, if there are four people then you could deduct their ages by 28 directly you don't have to do this minus 7 minus 7 four times 
so minus 28 and you just simply add all this so when you get comfortable with this you can always do like this 26x minus uh, 28 equals to 76 which gives us x equals to 4 and then simply putting in the values so the option a is the correct one in this let's see the next one the ratio of a is age three years ago and b is age five years ago is four is to five so well, it is a bit similar to the last question just a little bit variation in the, the last question it was written as uh, seven years for both all the four people here it is different so let's think about this a is age three years ago and b is age five years ago if a is age three years this is a is age three years ago this is b's age five years ago so what would be would be the present ages of this if the a's age three years ago was this then present age would be obviously be more because uh, three years ago was 4x the present would be 4x plus 3 b's age five years ago was 5x so the present age would be 5x plus 5 and uh, now simply reading the question again um, reading the question further if a is four years younger than b so b is the elder one 5x plus 5 4x plus 3 a is the younger one so we have to add 4 in a's age so this would come would give us x equals to 3 plus 4 7 minus 5 will be 2 5x minus 4x x so x equals to 2 so what will be the present age of b present age of b is nothing but 5x plus 5 that is 5 multiplied by 2 5 multiplied by 2 plus 5 that is 15 so option b is the correct one here so another age related problem let's see how this one goes Weed's grandfather was 11 times older to him six years ago okay this is Veer and this is Veer's grandfather now it is given that uh, their ages V was uh, 11 times the age of the, uh, his grandfather six year six years ago okay so these ages are six years ago these were their ages six years ago so what would be the present ages you have to just uh, add six to both of them these would be the present ages and uh, he will be three times of V's age 18 years from now so 18 years from now what will be their ages 18 years from now their ages would be x plus 24 right adding 18 to both of them and it is 11x plus 24 okay six years from now what will be the ratio of v's age to that of his grandfather's age so what is given here is that uh, 18 years from now V's age let's see this line again he will be three times of V's age 18 years from now okay so 18 years from now he will be three times his grandfather's age which which, which means that x plus 24 11 x plus 24 he is three grandfather would be three times of V's age so if you multiply V's age by 3, it would be equal to his grandfather's age. So solving it directly will give us 11x minus 3x from here. This would be 8x here. And 3 multiplied by 24 is 72 minus 24 from here. 
gives me 48 gives me x equals to 6 which would uh, uh, give me my answer but we need to see what what do we need to find now so six years from now six years from now so we'll uh, we'll have to add six to the present ages present ages are if we keep uh, x equals to 6 then the present ages would be 12 and uh, 66 plus 6 72 and uh, 6 years from now their ages would be 18 78 cancelling it by 6 give me 3 this would give me 13 and which is my answer so see the next one the present age of b and a are in the ratio of 9 is to 8 okay so we'll just write the present ages b a 9x 8x okay 10 after 10 years the ratio of the ages would be 10 is to 9 again a similar kind of question so 9x plus 10 8x plus 10 and give me 10 by 9 now solving this would give me 81x plus 90 equal to 80x plus 100 which gives me x equals to 10 now we'll see what do we have to find what is the difference in their present ages? So difference in their present ages is nothing but 9x minus 8x, which is nothing but x, and x is equals to 10, so 10 is our answer. Let's look at this one. This is a bit different from what we have done. A rupees 180 contained in a box consists of rupees 150 pesa and 25 pesa coins. In the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4. So let's look at this. I have three types of coins. Okay. 1 rupee coins, 50 pesa coins, and 25 pesa coins. Now they are the number of coins. And so this is an important point to remember here. The number of coins are in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4 which means the number of 1 rupee coins would be 2x, this would be 3x, and this would be 4x. Now, what would be the value of these coins? Okay, so let's see if there are 2x coins of 1 rupees each, that what would be the total value? We just have to multiply it, okay? 1 multiplied by 2x, this is 2x rupees of total of 1 rupee coins. This would be 30 multiply, 3 multiplied by 0.5. It is 1.5x rupees and this is 4 multiplied by 2.25 point, 4 multiplied by 0.25 it gives me rupees 1x this is nothing but 1 by 4 so 4 and 4 cancel this comes out to be 1 now these are the total rupees right and total rupees it is given to me already as 180 rupees okay so we'll just have to add this 2x rupees plus 1.5x rupees plus x rupees gives me 180 which would mean that 4.5x is 180 which means that x would give me 180 divided by 4.5 uh, I remember 45 stable so 45 fours are 180 x equals to 40 which would give me uh, my answer of uh, what is the number of 50 pesa coins the number of 50 pesa coins are nothing but uh, 3x 3x 3 multiplied by 40 is nothing but 120 so that's it for today guys i hope that you would have liked the video if you like the video then please press the like button in the next video we are going to discuss uh, ratio and proportion moderate level questions which would be helpful for you in sbipo prelims ibpspo prelims and various other exams as well so stay tuned and happy learning.